infectious diseases, research, medicine, health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to today's podcast. Now, in 2024 to date, dozens of measles cases have already been reported from multiple states here in the U.S., according to the CDC. And cases are increasing worldwide, as the World Health Organization announced recently, reporting more than 300,000 cases in 2023. That's a whopping 79% increase from the year prior. Now, my guest today writes, the risk associated with measles infection is much greater than the sum of its observable symptoms. The immune memories that you have acquired are priceless, built over many years and from countless exposures to a menagerie of germs. Measles virus is especially dangerous because of its ability to destroy what's been earned, an immune memory from previous infections, beautifully written. So joining me today to talk about measles, the importance of vaccination, and immune amnesia is Ashley Hagen, MS. Ashley is the scientific and digital editor for the American Society for Microbiology, and she hosts the ASM's Microbial Minutes. Hi, Ashley, and welcome to the program. Hi, Robert. Thanks so much for having me. You bet. I really appreciate you coming on. Good article. Um, Thank let you. Let me um, go ahead and ask you a little bit about measles. Now, measles is rearing its ugly head here and abroad. And mm -hmm. while many people think of measles as a mild illness, there can be some really serious complications that can go along with the, the infection. So let's start with some basics about measles. And uh, what is it? And how is it transmitted? Yeah, absolutely. So measles is one of the most transmissible infectious diseases on the planet. It's caused by a single-stranded RNA virus, Morbillivirus ominous, um, also known as the measles virus. While humans are the only known host, measles is related to other species of Morbillivirus that can cause disease including canine distemper and acute febrile respiratory tract infection in animals. Importantly, measles infects the respiratory tract of its host before spreading throughout the body. So that means the virus lives in the mucus of the nose and throat of those who are infected. And if a susceptible person comes in contact with those respiratory droplets, which can be expelled simply through breathing, coughing, runny noses, and even watery eyes, they're extremely likely to get infected. In fact, um, in a room full of exposed people, 90% of those who are unvaccinated, whom we recognize as susceptible, will develop disease. And even more concerning is the fact that the measles virus can linger in the air for up to two hours. So that means exposure can happen long after the infected person leaves the room. So in short, it's a super infectious virus, easily transmissible, and it hangs around for a while. Yeah. So Ashley, what are the typical symptoms that you see in a patient with measles? So measles symptoms, they typically develop around 10 to 14 days after exposure. And they include, the preliminary symptoms include fever, cough, runny nose, watery eyes, and they can be sore and sensitive to light. Also aches and pains and general malaise. And a small bluish white spots called coplic spots typically appear in the mouths of like 60 to 70% of measles patients about a day before the development of that characteristic measles rash, which shows up three to five days after the initial symptom onset. So the measles rash, which we're probably most familiar with, typically appears on the head and neck, and then it spreads outward to the rest of the body. And what it looks like is kind of um, small reddish brown spots. They can either be flat or slightly raised, and they can join together so they look sort of blotchy, and sometimes they're itchy for patients. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, measles infection is usually self-limiting, and it clears within seven to 10 days, but unfortunately, serious complications can occur. And as you mentioned, um, what we're going to talk about today, there are some things about the measles pathology, specifically immune amnesia, that make it more concerning than the acute infection alone. 
Yeah, and and you kind of uh, touched on uh, serious complications, and, and a lot of people either don't know about that or they uh, scoff at it. But there are mm -hmm. some serious complications that go along with measles. Can you go over that, um, Ashley? Yeah, it's it's interesting. You're right. A lot of people don't realize that there can be these severe complications, including pneumonia, encephalitis, which can lead to permanent hearing loss. Um, and in intellectual disabilities, and even death. So according to the CDC, one in every 1,000 children who gets measles will develop encephalitis. And some sources think that number might be even higher. So like up to two to three out of every 1,000 cases can result in either brain damage or death. And in 2021, uh, the World Health Organization actually reported that there are 128,000 global cases in the year 2021, and most of those were in unvaccinated children under the age of five. Right. So, so the, the young children and and probably mm -hmm. immunocompromised; those are the ones that are more susceptible to these yeah. complications, right? Yep. And and also, so pregnant women, older individuals, immunocompromised, like you mentioned, right. and then of course those who aren't immune to the virus. So that would be anyone who hasn't been vaccinated or had measles infection in their lifetime. Okay. So let's go ahead and um, jump into uh, immune amnesia, one of the more fascinating things about uh, measles. Um, it's one of the most unique and dangerous features of the pathology. Ashley, what, what is immune amnesia and how does the measles virus accomplish this? Yeah. So we've known for a while, actually, that measles infection leaves people more susceptible to disease. In fact, Measles infection was linked to severe immunosuppression in children as early as 1908, when children who had previously exhibited positive reactions to cutaneous TB tests actually tested negative after experiencing measles infection. But it wasn't until recently, relatively recently, that scientists began to understand what's going on at a cellular level and identified the mechanism behind this susceptibility, which we call immune amnesia. So it turns out the measles virus is able to infect and deplete the host's existing memory T and B cells. And these are the cells that are responsible for recognizing and destroying pathogens that the body has already come in contact with if and when a secondary exposure occurs. So the memory B cells make antibodies and then the memory T cells quickly begin to kill any damaged host cells and communicate to the immune system that a repeat attack has begun. The amazing thing is Memory T cells and B cells express SLAM, uh, more specifically CD150 SLAM F1, which is a protein that's been identified as a high affinity cellular receptor for the measles virus. So essentially the virus binds and infects the memory cells. And as the body clears the infection, it also destroys the infected lymphocytes. So we see the number of T and B cells significantly decrease during acute measles infection. But then the white blood cells rapidly return to normal levels once the virus is cleared from the system. Fortunately, qualitative analysis let us know that these recovered lymphocyte populations um, are very different um, following infection than they were prior to infection. So 11 to 73% of pre-existing immune memory cells have been erased. And there's this huge production of new cells that have only one memory, and you can guess, it's to measles. So in effect, the patient develops this strong measles-specific immunity after infection, but also has a newfound susceptibility to all other pathogens. Yeah, absolutely fascinating. And I would, I would bet that um, a very small percentage of the population even realizes this exists. Yeah. Um, Ashley, is this a lifelong thing? So. The short answer is no. Um, the next time an individual who has recovered from measles infection comes in contact with another pathogen, either through natural infection or revaccination, fresh memory cells will begin to be created. However, you know, obviously the person's immune system has taken a hit and it will essentially have to be retrained to recognize pathogens that it's likely already come in contact with and earned immunity against in the past. So it takes about two to three years post-measles infection for protective immune memory to be restored. And since research suggests that it takes children up to five years to develop healthy immune systems, they're undoubtedly the most dramatically impacted by this phenomenon. You know, someone who's within that two to three year age could essentially have their immune system reset to that of a developing newborn. So can we prevent it? 
Yeah. The only real way to prevent immune amnesia is to avoid getting infected with the measles virus altogether. And fortunately, we have a vaccine that's highly effective and safe with few side effects. So it makes this experience almost entirely unavoidable. And interestingly, there was actually a paper published in Nature Communications in early February of this year that's also looking at the possibility of therapeutically mitigating the effect of immune amnesia through like the use of antivirals. And I won't go into details about that study today, but if your listeners are interested in knowing more, um, we are going to be covering this on our YouTube series, Microbial Minutes, um, right. in the next couple months. So they can great, great, check great. it out there. Um, let's talk about the vaccine. You already kind of um, touched it on a bit, a little bit. Um, how safe and effective is it? Yeah, so it's, it's really safe. Um, you know, the side effects are limited to, you know, normally muscle soreness, just, you know, kind of muscle soreness at the site of vaccination. Um, and, you know, there, there are some cases of allergic responses and things like that that have been reported, but for the most part, considered really safe and highly, highly effective. So according to the CDC, the MMR vaccine is 97% effective at preventing measles after two doses. Um, and we've seen widespread, after widespread vaccination begun, um, that it led to greater than 99% reduction in disease in the U.S. So highly effective. Right. So before the I don't know, somewhere in the 1960s when the first measles vaccine came out, this was a very, very common thing and a good percentage of fatalities right here in the U.S. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Nearly every individual during childhood was infected with measles before yeah. the vaccine. Yeah. Um, now, how long is it protective? In most cases, the vaccine pr is, provides lifelong protection yeah. and a booster is not needed or recommended even during outbreaks. So well, it's a really good vaccine. Good stuff, Ashley. I appreciate this information on measles. Um, while I got you here, I'd like to give you an opportunity to talk about uh, the work of the American Society for Microbiology. Well, thanks, Robert. It's been really a pleasure talking to you. And thank you for um, sharing my article and sharing this important information, because I, I do think, you know, the, the measles virus, this isn't something that a lot of people are aware of, and it, it carries a much bigger risk than just the acute infection. So um, I appreciate that. And also, thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk about what I do um, and what I love. So I, I work for the American Society for Microbiology, and we are one of the largest professional life science organizations in the world. And we're a leader in scientific publishing. So we connect more than 36,000 members and millions of experts around the globe to harness their science and serve humanity and solve the world's most pressing challenges. So I absolutely love it. Um, I'm our scientific and digital editor, as you mentioned. I write and edit stories and content for the website. And I'm also host of our Meet the Microbiologist podcast, which tells the stories of the people who discover, innovate, and advance the field of microbiology. Um, that's one of my favorite parts of my job. Um, as I'm sure you can understand, we get to talk to amazing people, mm -hmm. really cool scientists um, like yourself. And I appreciate um, the time to talk with you and your listeners today. And if anyone is interested in uh, listening to Meet the Microbiologist, you can find it on any listening app um, and read more of our content on ASM.org. Excellent. Um, and for those that are interested, I will link to Ashley's article and, and the different podcast um, projects she's working on. So you can check it out for yourself. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And I want to thank you, Ashley Hagen, for sharing your time and your expertise with us today. I appreciate it, ma'am. Yeah, thank you so much, Robert. Have a great day. You also. Thank you.